Welcome, it's Local Edition, I'm Brad Pomerantz, and we are in the nation's capital. We literally are in the nation's capital we are right now. Well, we're underneath the nation's capital. It's all good, it's all it's good. Okay. His name is Alan Lowenthal. He is a member of the United States Congress, representing significant portions of the Long Beach area, as well as parts of Orange County as well. Western Orange County. And I want to speak with you about climate and climate change. Yes. Henry Waxman, a champion for the issue. He's left Congress. Yes. Someone is now chair of what's known as the Safe Climate Congress. Who yes, is that? that is me. Wow. I, I took over for for Henry Waxman mm -hmm. this past year, and uh, uh, to Henry set out the goals and the vision of really educating the Congress and having the Congress move forward with uh, climate change. Uh, uh, legislation to really begin to deal with some of the impacts. But let's talk about the issue because it has become very politicized. Right. It's gone all the way to the Vatican. Yes. And the Pope has come out in favor of analyzing the issue and addressing the issue. Yes. He's received some flack from some politicians here in America. And I, I would think that just looking at the issue neutrally, that the challenge you may have would be with some of your Republican colleagues yes. on the question. Yes. So how do you work to build a, a, a bipartisan caucus, which I understand is your goal? That is my goal. Um, I think the first thing to do is to reach out. I'm a relatively new member, as yes. you know, Brad. This is my second term. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I've done is to first kind of lay out. I have someone working with me on the caucus. I have a NOAA fellow. She has just received her PhD or receiving her PhD and she's spending a year in working as a fellow in the Capitol and she's elected to work in my office to kind of become the the staff person for the Safe Climate Caucus. Mm. And so she provides us all the background, the research on what's going on. She stays in contact with all the members and what we've done is look at all the voting records of everyone in the Congress and any members, both Democratic and Republican, who are not members of our caucus, who have supported in the past. Uh, and there's a significant number of Republicans on different issues, issues whether either directly or indirectly that's, that support the idea that the, that the Earth's climate is changing. And then I have set up meetings in their office just to develop relationships. So have you found, is there a pattern that has developed when looking at your Republican friends? Yes. It, 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 are they representing certain portions of the country? Are they representing certain, you know, urban versus rural? What have you found? Well, I found, for example, one of my, one of them, uh, who represents a Gulf Coast state, big oil producing state okay. in the Gulf Coast, realizes that much of his state is dependent at this moment on oil, but he understands the impact of climate change and would like to work on it. But he has tremendous restraints in terms of how far he believes he can go. I have another friend who's just come up, Republican from the state of Michigan, okay. who said, look, I really want to work with you. Maybe we should just frame it a little differently. Instead of talking about the emphasis on climate change, let's talk about how we can move the country towards other kinds of fuels without talking about okay. climate change. So I think that what we're saying is that, what, we're, what I'm hearing is that different members of Congress have what they feel are limits on how far they can go. But within that context, I just want to start the discussion and see how we can work together. And are you able, could it be a name change is necessary instead of the Safe Climate Caucus, Absolutely. the Alternative it, Energy Caucus? It could be or, any of those, but we will see that where, you know, if you think about where the nation was in terms of LGBT rights five to 10 years ago, it's a sea change in the last 10 years, both at the popular level and also seeing here in the Congress. Mm -hmm. You're going to see the same thing within the next 10 uh, years, five years. Talk. I just want to help to facilitate that process. Let's talk about LGBT rights. I yes. remember when we spoke, when you first came to Congress, yes. you decided to have the LGBT flag. Pride flag. Pride flag wave outside your office. Yes. And you said you would not take it down until the right to equality, equality was of held marriage. by all people. And You're close. Answers. We're getting <laughs> much, we're getting closer. Who would have thunk, like you said, that five to ten years ago we would be close? We, but a lot of our proximity towards the issue is court driven. Yes. And so I'm wondering how that plays out for you as a supporter of the issue, because having court driven 
equality can be seen as imposed by some. Well, we have court driven, you know, that's really when you think about the history of the civil rights movement uh, and you think about how much that was driven by Brown versus the Board of Education, mm -hmm. court driven, the, the seminal case in terms of, right. of uh, whether education should be provided, whether we everybody should have access to mm -hmm. our public school system or whether we'd have second, you know, separate right. but equal schools. Uh, I think what's interesting about the court driven is that it's come from the people and it's come from every state and it is, even though it's court driven, we're seeing state legislature after state le legislature supporting now equality. And I think that it has now gone far beyond any single court decision and there is now a general change in the public's attitudes of acceptance and promotion of the well-being of all citizens, but, especially but LGBT. is there, I mean, if I spoke with one of your colleagues yes. who was a Republican from California. Yes. Again, I'm making a generalization, but Absolutely. my guess is that they would be more supportive of LGBT equality than maybe a Republican from another right. portion of the yes. country. Yes. So I'm wondering, again, how do you broach the subject? How do you frame the discussion when you're speaking with a Republican friend not from California? Well, I, I, I think that what you're saying is, is that this is an evolutionary change that's occurring and along the way you have to understand the steps that are along the way and to be sensitive and to promote the next steps mm -hmm. for each person and they and you're right they may be different from someone living in an urban area right. in the east or the or the west coast than someone living in a more remote I parts mean, of consider the country. our president a democrat yes he did not support marriage equality That's when right. he first entered office uh, publicly publicly and did not come out as very few did publicly at that time, but that has changed because the public accepts it publicly. I, I understand you recently traveled to Canada. Yes, I did. And Brad. you were part of a conference looking at the question of ISIS. Right. ISIL. Terrorism, Com right. terrorism, Middle East, and, and, and ISIS in a region that has many failed states now and is in a sense of kind of, if you look at the the uh, sustainability of many of the states, there many of them are in free fall. And that's the question, where do we go from here? I asked one of your colleagues, Jim McGovern, is it time to look at the Yugoslavia model? And that country fell apart and there are now several successful former Yugoslavian republics. Is that the model that we should look at in Iraq, in Syria? Well, I, 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 I'm glad you put it in the concept of we should look at it. Mm. I think one of the things that, that we have learned in the United States uh, is that we cannot go into a part of the world, uh, clean up a mess, and then, imp then mm. say, all right, now democracy is, has mm. come to your shores. Just this, be, right. be you're Deal very with fortunate. It. Deal right. with it. Right. They're not, it, this, that too, you know, we can't impose that. And I think one of the things we've learned is that Unless the region itself wants to bring about change, there, we can be supportive of that change, we can promote the change, but we cannot do but it ourselves. one could argue that democracy is not part of their DNA, and that doesn't make them better or worse. That's right. It's just different. So That's right. is this a failed goal well, from the start? Well, that if, if what you meant was that there were m many strong armed leaders in the Middle East, strong mm -hmm. people, many of them dictators, uh, and we participated in overthrowing some of these mm -hmm. dictators, that may have been a great mistake. Not so much that they were dictators and that right. we wanted them not to be there, but that we participated in doing that, thinking that the country would then embrace, and you may be right, they did not embrace democracy. His name is Alan Lowenthal, member of the United States Congress from the great state of California. I'm Brad Pomerantz. It's Local Edition.